practical, be real, stay within the boundaries. That's what we are taught for most of our lives. But today I would like to take you on a journey of imagination, dreams and challenging boundaries as this picture states about me. So looking back at the 16 year old I was, almost half my lifetime ago, I was challenging boundaries, I was questioning my parents and the world around me of what they warned me of the world about. But I was a free bird, I wanted to explore, I wanted to learn and maybe burn my wings on the way. But I was up for that. I did not want to do what everyone else was doing with their careers. I did not want to follow a traditional path. When asked, most of my friends said, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer. And I was dealing with a very simple question. How do you know what you want to be? Hence, I decided to defy the rules. With a simple resume of a high school qualification, I landed up at HDFC Bank in my small town and went up to the branch manager and said, I come from a very humble family. I don't understand this process of investing the most crucial years of my life in an education that I don't know what I will be signing up for. So could you give me a job? He smiled at me and he said, stand at the ATM and sell as many systematic investment plans as you can. I looked at him with eyes open, what was that? But I was like, I will take that challenge. Two and a half months of a summer internship, I learned the first lesson of my life. If I would become a banker, God save your bank accounts. <laughs> I would be the worst banker. That was the first learning I had at the tender age. And I built my first pillar of my bridge to reach my dreams. The pillar of experimentation. Just try, give things a chance. Life is just too long. When I was asked by people, what is your ambition? We go to little people and ask, what is your ambition? They look up to us and they say, yeah, she's an engineer. I want to be like her. So similarly, I would answer with a very long answer. I want to be an innovator. But I hate traditional engineering. I will not make it to AIIT. I want to be a healer and create impact, but I cannot study traditional medicine. I want to be a leader, but does an MBA really take you through that journey? People would laugh at me and say, excuses, you would never do anything at all with the way that you answered this. In this journey of experimentation, I actually found my true passion, product design. It helped me invent solutions for the bottom of the pyramid, connect with people and really create true impact. One of my first products I designed was from the hometown where I came from. My father as a young child used to take me to the high altitude areas of the Nathula Pass at India-China border. I used to see as a child, Jawan struggling to get purified drinking water with an area filled with snow. And I took that as my first challenge to prove me and my skill and my passion to invent products. I ended up building a water filter to convert snow into purified drinking water without using electricity, renewable resources, or any form of external resource. This journey gave me little confidence and big dreams. I pushed myself further and wanted to save babies. With the attitude of curiosity that I had, I ended up working with the core team of Embrace, which started at Stanford for the Design for Extreme Affordabilities course. With learning design thinking a decade ago, we were able to invent a low-cost infant warmer for premature babies. Six babies die every minute in India, and we were able to save them with a very simple product that worked without electricity, was portable, improved mother-child bonding so that the mother does not see the baby in a glass box anymore. And we've been able to reach over 22 countries. That was my journey with Embrace. When you want to walk on the right path, there are a lot of people who want to join hands. And we formed an amazing team of friends who wanted to empower farmers back in 2007. Help farmers suicide with a simple mobile phone application in order to help them with their work. This journey of inventing products, saving babies, helped me become a leader in product design, innovation strategy, design thinking for a decade now. And I did exactly what I wanted to do without following a tradition. Coming from a very small town called Siliguri, it's at the foothills of Darjeeling. It's extremely beautiful. 
It's also called the chicken neck of the Northeast. My parents were always very confused of my weird choices of career or going to a village to save a baby without knowing anything about medicine. They warned me because they came from traditional backgrounds and from impoverished. I understood their fears that they did not want the same for me. In small towns where there is less exposure and money is the defining factor of success. Lack of money entails to fear, distress, immense humiliation and constant reminder that you are no good. Coming out of a situation of passion and patience, which I constantly saw as I grew up from my parents and my aunt. Their perseverance and patience to move mountains in that space. But what was I afraid of? I wasn't afraid of experimentation. I wasn't afraid of exploration. I wasn't running after jobs which would offer millions of dollars. I was, the seed of failure was set in my head. I was told that if I fail at something equals I am a failure. I want to ask each one of you, at the tender age of 21, have none of you made a mistake that you regret? Have you never had, a, had something to do which led to a remorse or a heartbreak? The same happens to me. Whether we define failure in our own words or with how the dictionary defines it, unfortunately in India, it is constantly defined and reminded by the society. When they walk up to my mom and said, oh, I heard about honey, feel so bad, no? And your child turns out to be a disaster and such a failure and such an embarrassment for you. She lives somewhere else, but you have to bear the brunt of it. My mother didn't do anything to hear that, but that's what failure means in our country today. For me, at the age of 26, because of something I had done at the age of 21, I failed, sorry. This is failing too. I failed at a scale that shook me, my family, and my entire world. You must not be wondering what happened. At the age of 21, I was married. With a lot of joy, freedom, love, expectations in my heart, I began my wedded life. But after six years of immense pressure and mental abuse, and having lost a child during the journey, I walked out of it. When I walked out of it, I had no scars. I had no marks to show people. I had nothing to show them that this has happened to me. And in the process, I lost self-confidence, self-respect, self-esteem, because I couldn't explain my problem. I had invisible scars that had killed the curious honey. When I questioned that why do you not understand the invisible scars, I was told that this is what a woman gets. If a woman experiences anything like this from a man who is not an alcoholic or has not beaten her like a cattle, it's absolutely fine. Have a child, everything is going to be okay. The baby is going to sort everything out. And if not, he has the power to do so. On the wedding day, you were offered to him as a kanya dan. Kanya meaning girl and dan meaning offering. He could do anything with the offering he had. I would like to say today, taking tortures in the name of religion, manipulating religion to abuse people is not okay. Accepting mental abuse is not okay. Giving up your dreams for someone else is not okay. And becoming someone else who are you, you are not is not okay. I embraced it. I said, all I have is failure right now. I was at the rock bottom, I had nothing to lose, I was nobody, and I was reminded of the words of one of the top philanthropists of our country, Mr. Tata. Take the stones that people throw at you and build a monument out of it. In a situation like that, how do I start? I start looking at my inner self, and I knew the importance of converting creativity and putting it down into something. This was a sketch when I had made it in immense pressure, disappointment, and the expectations that I would never be able to do any of it. I would not be able to move out of the bottle. I would never be able to fly. I would never be able to travel. I would never be able to dance again. I would never be able to even do anything. To my surprise, I said, why not? I am at rock bottom. I cannot go any lower. I only can go further. Let's paint a new picture again. As irrational, as stupid, as crazy I might sound, that very moment, I still remember, it was 11 p.m. at night. 
I picked up my laptop and I said, what does it take to go to MIT? Knowing nothing, having no background of Ivy schools or the experience of going to America, I decided to apply. Being a below average student from the traditional school system, I was warned. I was told, you're foolish. What are you trying to prove? From one disaster to the other? People who were my well-wishers warned me of the financial pressures, even if I had made it. But for me, I had learned something from my second pillar, which was embracing failure. Like, let me try. To my surprise, and hard work and perseverance paid off with mentors like Rahul Panikar writing my recommendation letter. I received the acceptance letter from MIT. I wanted to dance, I wanted to tell the whole world, I wanted to shake everyone and say, I made it, I made it. I made it to MIT, I proved all of you wrong. But reality struck. I was living in a developing country. And that was a developed country. MIT required fees, living expenses, and a ticket to go there. I had nothing. I was jobless. I was homeless. I did not even have enough funds to buy the ticket. Unlearning from what society had taught me for 29 years of my life, I decided to rekindle the 16-year-old honey. I said, apply design thinking to this. Who has money? Philanthropists? Billionaires, politicians, NGOs, ask, which became my third pillar of my bridge. Just ask. You never know where there is an opportunity. I want to show you something today for the first time in a public forum. Eliminating fear of failure being my subject line. For 32 rigorous hours, I sent emails to top billionaires in the world by Google being my guide permutations and combinations of their emails because I had nobody to introduce me to them. I was nobody. Nobody's going to introduce me to Ratan Tata or Bill Gates. I kept emailing them till I stopped receiving the failure delivery message because I know I'd cracked that email ID. I started a crowdfunding campaign for my tickets. But in a week, I had raised only $2,581 and exhausted my little network of friends who wanted to really help me. They came to me, they shook me and said, honey, wake up, you can't go, let's try something else. You won't make it, take up a job. And I said, no, I'll find a way to do this. As I mentioned to you, right, I was at rock bottom, I was nobody, and what does nobody mean? You're anonymous. You have no value. I decided to call the top 10 billion. I googled which headquarters they might be sitting in, called the operators, asked them if I could speak to them. I tried to turn time myself because I believe magic holds in the hands of people who own it themselves. To my surprise, Mr. Tata and the Tata Trust gave me a scholarship to go to him. Without any questions asked, without any justification to be given. We always hear stories, but experiencing one is nothing like it. Today, I'm back here in front of you from the US, back in India to drive change, to empower women. Over the years, I've learned it takes a lot of courage, rigor, and the fearless attitude to ask to build the bridge of success. I'm launching today a fellowship platform called Hidden Hunar which is going to give an opportunity to all women who just have the ability to ask. I would like to end in my regional language with a couplet, four lines by a poet. Abhi is baaz ki asli uran baaki hai. Abhi to mera asli imtihan baaki hai. Abhi to maine lange hai samandar. Abhi pura asman baaki hai. <laughs>